You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. We are happy to be back for another episode um, hosted here on the Catholic Family Podcast. So, um, as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and I'm Holly. If you're new here, welcome. Um, if you're returning, uh, welcome back. And we just like to start, as always, our episodes with Jesus, Jesus meek, meek and humble, humble of heart, make, make our hearts like unto thine. thine. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, we always jump right into these episodes and I always forget that, you know, maybe somebody's listening to this for the very first time. Right. So I'd like to just, uh, if you are, if that's you, you know, this is a weekly podcast that we do here on the Catholic Family Podcast where we have a little bit of discussion. We also are going over the book Mission and Duties of Young Women. So, um... Before we get into... And, and the book, tell them the book can be found. And the book can be found on our website, yes. So if you want a copy of the book, it is on our website for you to purchase. Um, because it is a very, very old book. Mm-hmm. It's from the 1800s. And my mom had a very ripped up copy yes. that you got off, what, eBay, I think? Yes. Yeah, and we can't find it anywhere. So we the copy that we sell is a reprint. So, right. um, And we don't make... Hard, well, we don't make it any cost us more to ship it <laughs> than, than what you guys pay for it, but whatever it is, because what we're it in is. Canada, that's why the book is a little pricey, is because yeah, we're in the Canada. shipping cost is ridiculous. And the man who actually um, put compiled put the, the book, book together, for, we give him some the money, the money for, yeah, for his um time because it was a lot of well, time. He actually re he actually retyped the whole book. Can you imagine? It's not just a photocopy. He retyped the whole book. Yeah, because we started out with a photocopy, and then he and said, this just, is awful, so I'm, I'll just retype. Because then he wanted to make a bigger print, easier to read. Yeah, so, so he I put would a actually, lot of work into it. He put it. a lot of work into it. So I would actually just like to ask you ladies to maybe keep him in your prayers yeah. for his efforts. Just yeah. say a nice prayer for and him. And he, he also he, runs a YouTube channel. He runs a YouTube channel, too, which we mentioned last week, Holy Family Productions. And I believe I put the link in the description which last week. Which didn't work. None of the links None work. None of the links work. Th- you know what? I think YouTube does that on purpose. Yeah. So honestly, I'll... I mean, they didn't work for me. I, I tried I put them. the links there, but... And you can see the name. So then you just put the name in the search yeah. bar. And then you can just find it. Like... Yeah, he does... Um, because I'm getting really annoyed with these links, right. to be honest, not working. And he does, um, he he does narration of the the Stations of the Cross and and the and Rosary, which things. are really excellent to follow. Really along. great resources on there. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So if you could just remember him in your prayers, and um, and uh, that's just another little resource. And on the topic of resources, we did put out last week that uh, if anybody wanted us to share anything they're doing. Right. Um, and we got an email. And I actually apologize. haven't responded to the email on our site yet. Um, I got it. And I got excited when I got the email. Yeah, and I you forgot to all respond. Over. It looks great. Uh, but there was a woman that reached out to us. Amy was her name. And she has a really great Etsy page. Uh-huh. She makes vestments um, for dress up. For little yes, boys. Right. Um, really beautiful vestments. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, full sets and everything and and uh I'm I'm just waiting and I'm gonna probably get some for my son because he plays mass all the time. Yeah, you guys did when you were kids too. And so yeah. this is a far cry from when you used the tea cozy for the, the bishop's stat. hat. <laughs> the tea cover, yeah. So my son, we were actually at an antique mall the other day and we found a cruet. Yeah. You know, it's they had on it a vinegar pour, but Dougie found it and he said, accrue it, accrue it. Yeah. So I bought it for him for his little mass. There was only one. I wish there was a second one, but it's a start. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to, I'll share her Etsy page in the description. Now that's a link that should work because it's not to another YouTube channel. Yeah. We seem to, to I don't not know have what YouTube has links. against YouTube. You sending YouTubers. people to other YouTube channels. It's not I like they're it. trying to leave YouTube. Yeah. But anyways, so I will share her Etsy page. Uh, beautiful things on there and you can take a look and then the other one was a friend of ours um used to live in canada now she lives in the states she started a channel yes uh, for sourdough sourdough bread bread, making sourdough bread so which is a great skill and everybody should learn it so again i'll try to share yeah she just started she's just but it's uh she's got three things on her but you know you follow along on these people when they start out and then you grow with them right you know so um yeah so those are some of the you didn't say what it's called what her channel 
Oh, well, I was going to put it, but it's Saint. I don't even know if I'm going to pronounce the name right. So that's I've, why I've never I don't heard of him. I've never heard of him. So Saint maybe I Honora, have a little. Saint Honorer Bread. Yeah, you must Honora. be the patron. It's got to be French. It must be the patron saint of bread. bread. And we don't have it. You're actually going by memory. You're not looking. Actually, I'm not look. looking at the word. So it's hard to say when you're not looking at the word. Saint Honorer, maybe. Yeah. Honorera. I don't know. We'll but it, I, it'll be in the description. And we'll put a link. Uh, the text will be there typed out how it's spelled. So if the link does not work, <laughs> you can go to the search bar and just copy that text and put it in the search bar. I found it no problem. Yeah. My mom just told me the name of it and I typed it in. I found it no problem. Right. So, yeah. Um, that's another option. So, anyway, so. Um, there's yeah. two good Catholic there's friends. There's two good Catholic friends, good Catholic resources. Yeah, we're creating and, the world um, we want to live in. People. And the thing is about this, too, that I was thinking about this, you know, the more you follow these people, say, even if you're not interested in making sourdough bread. Right. Right? But wouldn't you rather have nothing in your timeline but good Catholic resources? Right. Even if you don't watch everything even if you have a little rather open your phone or open your youtube and just see good catholic content even if you don't click on it right you know like i would rather see all that good catholic content than even if i don't have time to watch it all at least i know i'm not opening youtube and seeing trash you know yeah exactly. so just and you know what there it doesn't hurt anything to subscribe to somebody's channel no, just to help them out. Just to help them out. Man, Even, it's like it's like no effort. No, yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah just, it's like subscribe to this channel. No effort. Yeah. Put a like on it. No yeah, effort. Yeah. You know, you're just pushing. When you do that, you push the content. You yeah. say, this is the world I want to live in. Like, subscribe. Yeah. And, you, you know, know, I've been thinking about some things. And I was really thinking about what Kevin said in that last video we talked about. And he had a special little gift for somebody. Yeah. Um, I have been... I'm going to start working on special little gifts for some of our yeah our followers. I um I ordered something and this it's very small and it's very but I I got this new tool. It's a laser engraver. Yeah. So I want to work on some things and I'm going to be testing out some things. So I have some tests that I'm going to be doing, but I decided instead of just, you know, making this stuff and just throwing it in a pile in the corner and it's when I say test, I mean it's going to be worthy stuff. Like it's yeah. not going to be garbage. But um, so I'm going to start sending out some things to people that have ordered our books and you know yeah, stuff yeah. like that, just as little thank yous. So because um, I thought when Kevin said that, I thought that's such a great idea. Yeah, you know. Yeah. It is so, idea. so anyway, so if you're one of the uh, one of the uh, lucky followers that get something in the mail from me, and you're like, "What is this? It's not junk mail. Don't throw it right, out." Right. <laughs> So uh, let's just do a rundown of all the Catholics we know right now because I, I really like it. The Catholic Wire. Yeah. Right. Um, Holy Family Productions. Productions. So Today. Yeah. Um, St. Honore Bread. Bread. Yeah, you did a better job than me. Um, this Etsy shop, what's it called? Is this, do uh, Etsy I, shops have a name? I'm not an yeah, Etsy they, shopper. They have names, um, but they don't. Um, oh, Vestments for Juniors. Because see, Vestments for Juniors. I mm-hmm. mean. Most people just say, oh, I have an Etsy shop, right? Yeah. But she sent the link, and it's called Vestments for Juniors. So. Are we missing anybody? I felt like we mm. did three. Yeah, I don't know. Three YouTube. Oh, us. 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 <laughs> our, our website, which we. <laughs> which we just joke around. It's mostly for the kid, for Ava, for yeah. the daughter to do something and yeah. have some fun and learn the camera a bit. But Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it is a little bit interesting, if I guess. Mm-hmm. If yeah, it's interesting. Watching what watching people are what doing. what people are doing. Especially when they don't know what they're, they're doing. doing. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's uh, some of our videos sometimes. My mom says multiple times, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it. you anyways. know what? Don't be afraid. Don't that's be afraid. my that's our motto. Just do something. Yeah. Then don't worry. I've always been like that my whole life. Like, if you stink, well, you won't stink the next time you do yeah. it. You know, like you just. Well, maybe the third or fourth time. Third or fourth time. <laughs> You know, don't be afraid to fail Yeah, is my motto. Well, and you know what? It's funny because I, this has been my whole like life in the last 11 years is my DIY channel, my YouTube channel and teaching people how to use a Cricut cutting machine. And they will say all the time, I open the box. I can't figure it out. I'm done. Yeah. And then you're, and you're like, well, you just opened the box. Yeah. You didn't even <laughs> take the machine out. Like, yeah. you know, you like, can't, you can't expect to pick up a piece of electronic equipment and figure it out bingo bango just like that right it doesn't work like that you have to work at things it's even you know learning a musical instrument anything anything 
Just, you and you guys, you can't give up you either. Can't you give can't give up. Like, oh, yeah. oh, I don't know. I'm dumb. I, yeah. I can't do this. So I'll just sit just, down and watch some more television. So I, but I think that's why, you know, it's it, people like to watch somebody try something, you know, mm-hmm. and do it, persevere because it, it is. Um, and if I'm what I personally believe, if we can do it, anybody can do, do it. it. Yes. You know. Yeah. So, so anyway, so what do you have to talk about today? Oh, what do I have to talk about? Well, last week we um, we briefly touched on the trad wife. Yes. Right, this new TikTok thing where everybody... Phenomenal challenge, if you will, for life. Well, everybody, word. I mean, and they're disgruntled. They see um, the world has handed them a massive mess, mm-hmm. right? And they don't like it. So they're trying to go back in history a bit. And say, maybe this was a better way. Maybe being a trad wife. like. Was and when they say trad wife, I, I don't believe they mean they anything They don't mean to, anything to do with religion. No, they mean a traditional role model mm-hmm. wife. Right. Yeah. Right? Like, they're not they're not talking about Catholics here. They're not ta- they yeah. talking about the role of a traditional wife. Right. And, um, and I briefly touched on it that like hey i'm glad people are going in that direction like yeah, it's a better, it's direction, better direction than the to other to go in but um as we know from experience that is kind of doomed to failure too mm-hmm. as far as i'm concerned it's doomed to failure like they'll only do it so long and they'll stop right because because there's not enough in it to keep them going okay right so um so when i was trying i was doing we just briefly touched on it and I was doing some thinking about this and I'm like, okay, how do I explain why that's flat? Why there's not enough depth in that mm-hmm. to be the person that, that, um, you know, bakes the brownies and does fluffs the, her husband pillow. you know, fluffs her husband's pillow and puts on the red lipstick and a pretty dress and, yeah. you know, runs around, looks after the children, you know, all this stuff, which is all admirable stuff right like that's good stuff like you should be doing that stuff i have nothing against what they're doing i'm just saying why is it flat right and why is it they might they probably in the long run will not persevere will not persevere and not only not persevere but they will find their life lacking Mm -hmm. right because it is lacking. So I have a little bit of a confession to make. Oh, okay. Confession, right? And you you know what I mean. I know, because she already told me that she was going to say this, and I was just like, like oh, you, you were like, Mom, don't do it. it. Don't say this. But she's going to say it anyway, <laughs> because that's who my mom is. <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway. I There's this particular song out there from the early 70s that I really like. And... Oh. Okay, I don't know that you should say you really like it. I would say there's some lines in there that you like. I know. Okay, but I know. There's there, also some lines that are horrid. They're awful. They're yes. awful. Right? There's a lot of awful in the song. I shouldn't say, okay, I shouldn't say that, but there's, there's a lot of awful in the song. But the sentiment that the song provides, I think, is what I really like. Yeah. Shall I dare say it? Well, you're going to have to now. The feminist anthem of <laughs> all time. <gasps> I am woman, hear me roar. Is that what the song is called? I am woman. It's called hear I am woman. Me. Oh, not hear but the, me roar. No, though. but the first line is I am woman, hear me roar. Okay. Ugh. First of all, nobody <laughs> should ever <Her> be roaring. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, let's just try to, this song came out in 1971. So let's try to put our mental cap on 1971. I was there in 1971. I was a mere nine years old, mm-hmm. but I was still there. Okay. So we're coming out of the 50s and the 60s of this trad wife the ultimate trad wife of the 50s right Right. so i mean even in uh, traditional catholicism the big thing to do was to try to go back to the 50s like they want to like okay we need to go back in time to this period of time because this was the period of time where we last had the catholic church right right? so we have this desire to like no i'm not going into the future i'm not doing it i don't like it i don't like this feminism i'm going back to the future right or back to the past i mean yeah but it doesn't work and there's a reason that these women didn't sustain that right that they came out in the 60s and they were like no there's more to me than this Mm -hmm. there's more to me than this i have purpose i have a purpose right (laughs) and we know from reading the book 
we need we know from reading the book um what it, well, not reading the book what was the book called the mission statement mission of, and duties of young we women. know from that book that there's more to a woman than baking brownies and making rosaries right right that she has a very very specific purpose that involves the salvation of souls that involves um well, the salvation of shows. Is there more yeah. specific than that? You know, the salvation of her family, the salvation of herself, her the salvation children. of her, you know, every, every, to bring grace and holiness into the world. Yeah. Like that's a purpose. Not as the very, the very first thing in the book said, it's not, you're just not an ornament to your husband. Right. You have a mission equally as important as the man's right? right so when you're when, in the 50s when all these people were traditional women or traditional role models you might say they didn't grasp the purpose right they didn't understand the purpose right so i mean so what I, what i like when i hear the song i am woman right okay i feel like i get all like oh yeah i can do it. well it's a line in the song it said if i have to i, I can, can do, do anything, anything. Right. I mean, and they're they're looking at it from a feminist viewpoint. Like, you know, if I want to be a doctor, I can be a doctor. I mean, the if I want to be a fireman. I can be a fireman. I can woman. be a fire. You know, I can do whatever I want. I <laughs> yeah. can go to the moon. I can do this. I can do that. Right. I mean, and to be truthful, the Catholic Church has never said that a woman cannot do those things ever. Right. Right. So here we have we have this. This trad wife of the fifties, and I'm going to blame this all at the feet of Protestants, like I like we did in the very first right. episode when we go back to, um, you know, Henry the Eighth, mm-hmm. when they took away Mary, and they did all this stuff, right? Yeah. And so we've been rolling on, you know, five hundred years or whatever, four hundred years. I can't bad math skills here at the moment, <laughs> but whatever, you know, of a long time, a long time of Protestant infiltration, right? Right. So the I am woman is like, like, I just don't want to be that anymore. I want more in my life. And like I said, if, if they'd gone Catholic instead of embraced feminism, they would have had more in their life. Right. They would have had a lot well, because more. Because the meaning is there. The meaning is there, right? Yeah. So anyway, so when... When I hear the song, I have a tendency to get all like, yes, you know, like I can do anything, you know, like I just, you know, don't, I, um, I'm here and I'm, I'm large and you know, whatever. Right. I know. I, I get it. You're laughing. I can't even listen to it, mom. <laughs> I know it's, it's <laughs> nobody should be roaring. I get that. Okay. But I'm going to, I'm going to talk about somebody. Okay. Go ahead. St. Teresa. Right. St. Teresa. Is she a flower or is she a fighter? Yes, she's a fighter, but right. she doesn't roar. Exactly. That's the bad part of the song, right? <laughs> she okay. That, there's we, we nothing will definitely, about her that roars. We will definitely agree. No roar. And there is a lot of silly lines in there. Like, um, I am invincible. Nobody's, inv- nobody's, nobody's invincible. invincible. You know, like nobody's yeah. invincible. Like there is a lot of silly. I'm not going to take that away. But what we have here is we have on one set of the scale, we have the trad wife. Yeah. And then on the other end of the scale, we have I Am Woman, yeah. Feminist Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. So here we have we have these two scales, right? They have to meet in the middle, okay. right? You can't be I Am Woman, Hear Me Roar, you know, like I'm whatever, yeah. you know. And you can't be this, you know... I have no purpose. I'm nothing here but an ornament for my husband kind of thing. Yeah. So like in religion, as in the Catholic Church, everything always meets in the middle. Right. It meets you in the never, middle. You never go to extremes. You never go to extremes. So there's never, I mean, if if you're far left, you know, it's a little bit of nutty clown world, which, which we're experienced. And then when you go Before far right, it's a world without mercy. Right. Yes. So, I mean, be very careful, people, when you're pushing for the right. Yes. Because, because the right is a world without mercy. Well, it's like, you know, I always take it back to the time. I take every, I try to take everything back to when Jesus was here. Right. You know, and you, and you see the players and you see the thing, you know, you see the players at hand. <clears throat> and then you look at the zealots. Yeah. For example. Okay. And, and maybe I shouldn't do this, but I see far right extreme. Yeah. 
and all I see is zealots. Right. They they want they want justice and they want, you know, the the um the reckoning. Like you know what I'm trying to say? They 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 uh they want the satisfaction. The that, satisfaction that they're right that and, comes from being right. 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 So, you know, and it's like, you know, and you you have to think of the people that were closest to Jesus. Yeah. This is what I always do. You know, you think about the people that were closest to Jesus. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? Mm -hmm. What was St. John doing? What was Mary Magdalene doing? What was St. Peter doing? Yeah. You know, what were the people closest to Jesus doing? And to me, if you think of that, and I'm not saying I'm perfect at this, right. but if you try to base your decisions off of that, yeah, I think you go a lot further, mm -hmm. you know, personally. But right. no, this So it's just, it's always about trying to walk that middle line. You know, you, obviously there are injustices going on. A lot of injustice. A lot of injustice going on. And I don't think we should roll over like dogs and say, well, that's you know, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you just have to be very careful when you go to the extreme. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something here. Okay. So this here. Is about just, back to I am woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sort of. A, cur a crusader soul. Okay. Right there. What is this? From? So, uh, well, it's just a quote from St. Teresa. So oh. go down here. Oh, start. The, the, where the quote starts. Okay. Right here. Or here. Yeah. Okay, so, quote. I went to sleep for a few moments during prayer, she would tell Mother Agnes. I dreamt there was not enough soldiers for a war against the Prussians. Is it Prussians? Prussians? Prussians. I don't know. That's, I always said it, Prussians. You said we need to send Sister Trez of the Child Jesus. I answered that and I agreed, but that I would prefer to fight a holy war. But finally, I went all the same. Oh, no, I would not fear going to war. With what joy, for example, at the time of the Crusades, I would have gone to combat heretics. Yes, I would not have been afraid to be shot. I would not have feared the fire. When I think I'm dying in bed, I would want to die in an arena. End quote. So that St. Teresa appears some 40 times in various battlefields, at times holding a cross. Okay, Mom, I found that very confusing. <laughs> who was talking and who wasn't? Oh, you found that confusing? Yes. Well, St. Teresa's talking. Oh, okay. She she dreamt that she went to war, right? And that she she had this yeah, St. Teresa have to explain that. St. Teresa had a big love for St. Joan of Arc. Yes. And she had a love for war. Okay. But, yeah, like she did. So, I mean, so here. Yeah, but she said a holy war. A holy she would prefer a holy war. Right. But what I'm saying is if you notice in the saints, they all have this you know, uh, uh, fighter spirit to them, right? But okay, so here's the trick. Here's the trick. So what does St. Teresa actually do? I'm sure she probably prayed and sacrificed. She goes, joins a uh, cloistered order. Right. Right? Oh, so this, this was before she became a nun? No, no, she's saying? a nun there. Oh. She's a nun. But I mean, she has the desire, she has the the fire that, to, you know, to, uh, like, I, I, it's hard to describe it without sounding like, you know, your Angelina Jolie, you know, <laughs> taking names and, you know, kicking Whatever. up a storm. Right. Yeah. You know, like it's hard, but it's it's the fire that's in the soul for the love of God and how we overcome or not overcome it, but how we control that, not control, not control is not the right word. Okay. Um, How we give it justice, oh, I think is the right okay. word. Right, she went to a cloistered convent. Convent, completely removed herself from the world. Completely removed herself from the world, and surrendered herself to God. Yeah, right. So, in here, in some other writings on Saint Teresa, here, let me just see if I can find them here. Just a sec. I gotta put my glasses on. And she's telling us basically that this is here. Read that down here under number three. Therese is a warrior, even though her battles are fought for love by means of love, for peace by means of peace. Her battle is to wipe out that human will to power disguised in the mantle of religion that drives one to assert one's own greatness instead of acknowledging that God alone is great. Right. Unquote. Right. So, so the thing is, is as a, we're going to use the term trad wife, quote unquote, you know, mm -hmm. trad wife, as in God fearing 
Catholic woman, right? Right. Your strength and your power. I mean, where St. Paul tell us it comes from? Afflictions. Yes. Right. It's in the afflictions, right? It's when you surrender your will. So when you glorify God, when you're obedient to your husband for the glory of God. Right. Right. When you leave your right at the foot of the altar for the glory of God. When you do what no one else will do for the glory of God. Right. Not for your own satisfaction. Not for how you're perceived at up to others. Right. So the in in this, in this, and, and I know it's hard to talk about it without sounding like you're being, you know, vain and pompous and right. righteous. Right. But in this, this is where the power is. It's the surrendering of the will. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of an example because years ago in, in my keyboard, key, keyboard warrior, warrior days. Things. Yeah. Not correct, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be keyboard warriors. All right. It doesn't work. But I had this uh, this argument with a person. Um, this is, it had, I can't even remember where it was, but he was a person who was attracted to the same sex. Yeah. And he's just laying it out to me. I can't even remember what he's saying. I just remember what I said to him. And I said, look, I said, I'm sorry, but anybody can be you any day of the week. Right. And he was like, he was like, what are you talking about? You know, how could, I said, I could be you any day of the week. I said, you do what you want. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. I, you live to do what you want. Yeah. I said, I don't do that. I said, you couldn't be me in five and a half seconds. Right. You know, and of course that ended with block and delete. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, see, that's the truth, right? That's where, that's where the, power comes from is in in the ability to sa sacrifice yourself and surrender yourself to god's will and to surrender yourself to god's will right because it is it's easy to sit there and do what you want oh, and, yeah it's easy to do what you, you want you people do it without thinking right you know but to sit there and give that resignation to god you know and to be and to say i'm not going to do what i want i'm going to do what you want that is really hard and especially as a wife right especially as a wife under a husband when you have to, you know, you have to do what he said. He's the commander of the ship. Yeah. Whether good or bad. Yeah. And that's what people don't forget. Whether good or bad, you know, he's the commander of the ship. Right. right? And the graces are are dispersed and given. The souls are won by our ability to surrender our will. Yeah. You know, and, and so this is why, this is why I say... You know, this, this trad wife, she's a nice woman, all right. But unless you get the fire in the belly, you know, of your purpose and of your fight and of your here to save souls. And as what the ones, what's that line again? I've forgotten already in the song. If I have to, I can do anything, yeah. you know. So, so that's why, um, I guess that's where I'm going with this. You know, like you can't be all feminist and you can't be all trad wife. You have to come into the middle with the fierce strength and, you know, power that comes from doing God's will. Right. So the the motive has to be there for the right reason. Right. So like if you're, if the, I'm not saying this about any of these trad wives on TikTok in particular. I'm oh, I don't saying, even know any of them. I don't know them. Yeah, so at all. Just, but I'm just saying, if you're going to do this, you're going to don the red lipstick, you're going to fluff your husband's pillow, you're going to put pork roast on the table every night, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. If you're doing that for, I don't know, A, how you're perceived to the world, how you're perceived to him, how you, you know, that is going to fall extremely flat very quickly. Right. Because the selfish will is powerful. Right. Right. So if you're not uniting that to, I'm doing this for the greater glorification of God and because it is my duty and this is what God expects of me. Yeah. The odds of you sticking with that is not good. Slim to nil. Slim to nil. Because eventually you go, I'm not taking this I'm anymore. Not, I can't take this anymore. I can't do this I, you anymore. Know, I can't subject myself like this. this. Yeah. Especially in this day and age. Right. Where everybody's shoving 
feminism down your throat and every song, every movie, every book, every, you Mm -hmm. know, it's very hard to sit there and go, well, I'm doing this because what? Why? Why? Yeah. You're going to eventually, you're going to I mean, I mean, they they have the right purpose. They're looking for a better life. They are looking for a better life and, and they're looking for a purpose. But they have to go deeper down the well. Than what they're doing. Than yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. And I mean, maybe, who knows? Maybe they will get, maybe this will, you never, you never know where the path will lead. Yeah. And yeah. I should say, you know, you never know, like if their intentions are good. Yes. And they want to better themselves. They want to better for their family. Right. They want to bring traditionalism into their life. You don't know where God will take oh, them. Oh, no. God's grace is you know. And I mean, I do, I do hope they do stick with it, and maybe it will lead them to the right path. Like you hear stories all the time of people that come to the Catholic Church. Yeah, and I mean the Catholic Church, not yeah. you know, and the the pathways that brought them there. Oh, weird. Sometimes weird, miraculous. Yeah. Um, and just sometimes because you know God, who knows God? Mm-hmm. There they put something good there, you know. Mm-hmm. And they were rewarded. I don't know. I, I yeah. can't, you know, I just hear many stories of people. Right. So you never know, but. what? And the other thing too about the I am woman, right? <laughs> yeah. Is because I am not a fan, and you know this because you know me, but yeah. I'm not a fan of the victim mentality. No, my mom does not like the vi- being a victim. Like, you know, like, I mean, and I don't, when people are down and beaten, you know, like, I'm, I'm kind of like the. You know, if I if I encounter them and I'm like, whoa, whoa, get up, get up. Yeah. Don't stay down. Don't stay down. Yeah. Get up. You're a woman. Get up. Yeah. You know, especially if you're a Catholic woman. Yeah. You got a crown on your head. Yeah. Get up. Get up. Don't stay down. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm all about, you know, helping people get back up. But I'm not a fan of the victim, right? And, and this is what I think, because I, sometimes I can be a little harsh. Yeah. To my fellow Catholic women. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or even my daughters maybe yeah i was gonna say <laughs> never mind them <laughs> i'm just like no no you you got a crown on your mm-hmm. head you know act court. you know just like, can i just have five minutes to wall over here <laughs> <laughs> it's the fear you know i'm not a, i'm no, not but a... it's true because you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to wallow right you're not supposed to despair yes you know so because i mean it is it, it it's okay to be sad yeah And this is just me speaking from personal experience. It's okay to be sad. But I will tell you, the minute that I am sad, and if I let that go just to tip over the edge into despair or wallowing, it's like you go go down a slide. Oh, yeah. Like it's a slope. And then you've done slid down. You done slid down, you know. So it's like you, <laughs> now you gotta climb. Now back you up. gotta and and have it. Has anybody tried to climb up a slide? Yeah, it's not easy, right? right. You know, actually, so, the dentist said that's where all the accidents happen. Yeah, on slides with the teeth. Is that what teeth. she said? Yeah, she said the number one cause of because my son slid down a slide, knocked his front tooth, chipped it right off. Adult tooth too. Oh, I wasn't mad, and. uh and I brought him in and she said, this was a slide, wasn't it? I said, yeah. And she, I like, how did you know? And she goes, majority of kids coming in with their front teeth chipped off is from a slide. Yeah. Slides are dangerous. <laughs> so don't slide. So slide. Don't slide. <laughs> Anyways, that's just silly. But I, we're just being silly. But no, it's the truth. You know, like you can, you can allow yourself a moment of sadness. You can allow yourself. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say that, but. No, you can allow your moment. Oh, you, okay. You can be sad. You can be sad. You can, you can be sad any day of the week. Be sad all you want. Yeah. You know, people die. Bad things happen. This makes me sad. Sometimes I'm weary. Like I'm yeah. so weary right now. It's, can can this stop? Yeah. You know, but you can't. You can't allow it to go further than that. You can't allow it to go further than that. that's the than victim, that. victim mentality, mentality that right? my mom is speaking of. You know? Right. And especially, I think, you know, we're so blessed. Yeah. We have the sacraments. We have the truth. We have everything. Yeah. You know, we, and, and I mean, as we're going to be held accountable for that too. Right. Like you don't get a lot of gifts with and them. without a lot of, well, what did you do? Well, you had what did everything. What you do with them? What did you do with everything? Yeah. Right. You know, so all, all I'm saying is women get the gusto, get the, get the gusto, get the, Oh, I am woman. You know, that and doesn't mean roaring. That doesn't mean roaring. That doesn't mean roaring. That just means, you know, 
You can do and anything. You know what? I you know what I I believe I know I've said this in in one of our podcasts before, but you know, you, it's that age old um, saying: actions speak louder than words. And no one is going to listen to a woman roaring on a rock, right? You know who they're going to, and even if they don't know it or admit it, they're listening to the woman down in the fields doing yeah. her duty. Yes, silently suffering. That's how you make your impact. Right, right. You doing s- your duty, doing the greater glorification for God. Right. Like you St. Know? Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. She wished she was fighting in the field like she had the fire to do that. Yeah. But no. She surrendered herself completely to what God wanted for right. her. And look at the chain. Look at the impact yes. she made. Yeah. In a cloister. In a cloistered convent. Yeah. You know, let that sink in. Right. Right. You know, so. Anyway. Should we segue over to our book? We should. The we last, should. Because uh, we let, we finished off chapter eight, I believe. So now we are uh, moving on to chapter nine. You got to find it. So, um, well, chapter nine was, um, what did we say? What was it? In private, private interviews in interviews marriage. Interviews and. And I'm going to say a couple th- things. I, I did. Uh, oh, she did make some notes. In I did make lots of notes because there's lots to be said. Okay. There is so, lots to so be said. So we cannot mix up. So, cannot skip so I think chapter. I started. I see there, okay, yeah. go ahead, read. So we'll go ahead here and read. Okay, so quote from chapter nine of Mission and Duties in young, of Young Women, Private Interviews Before Marriage. Quote, above all things, they should carefully shun private interviews with those who seek their hand. These secret meetings owning owing to the weakness of nature, have an immoral tendency and are for most persons proximate occasions of sin. They too frequently give rise to sinful thoughts, desires, words, and actions, some of which become known and give public scandal, whilst many others are concealed from every eye except that of God. End quote. What did I write? A so you got your notes there, so do you want to go A little ahead? side note, okay. Um, I mean, that's pretty... Pretty self-explanatory. Right. Well, okay. So that's self-explanatory, but I wanted to go into the whys and how comes. Okay. Right. Well, first of all, um, what happens when you have private interviews? Okay. Uh, I'm going to even go back in one step further. Do you think male and female can just be friends? Uh, No. And I've said that for a very long time. Right. So if you're hanging out. I have said that for a very long time. And you know, that is so new age thinking. You know, you hear of all these, and I'm talking secular people here. Right. You know, you know, men that have female friends and they have wives. Yes. And that, that just makes my stomach turn. Do you remember my. And not because like, it just, it's so sad to me for the wife. Yes. But even if they're not or married, even, even if they're not married, okay. So, so not married. let's pretend two sixteen-year-olds are just friends, male and female. Yeah, right. Can they actually be friends? I don't think so. No, I'm going to tell you. I've never in my whole entire life seen a male and a female be friends where one does not have a crush on the other one yes like one may not like so let's just say for they're example they're friends they're friends the boy may not have a crush on that girl but the girl has a crush on that boy right and if the girl doesn't have a crush on that boy the boy has a crush on that yes, girl there's right. a reason why they are there's friends. a reason that friendship is sustaining Stain. yeah that one or the other has romantic Dick designs science. on the other and the one who doesn't have the romantic designs it's just comfortable yeah it's convenient yeah. for me to just chat away with you and you yeah. don't bother me and you don't do this and you don't do that, right? So um, if you're, you know, I'm pretty sure there's not very many 16-year-olds listening to this podcast. <laughs> but if you, but, but, if it, they are. but if you have young children, um, don't encourage that at all. Yeah. At all. Because one is usually using the other. Right. That friendship is not... Just a straight, what's the word, platonic? Is platonic the word relationship. It's yeah. platonic because one person is in love and the other person mm-hmm. is not. That's yeah. why it's platonic. Yeah. And the person who is not in love is using the other person right. for convenience. Uh, yeah, I just, I just because usually, do not believe that male and female. Usually the one who's in love will do anything for that other right. person. And so of who course doesn't, they're going to eat that up. Who doesn't want somebody around who will just do, do anything, anything for, for you. you Yeah, all the time? And yeah. will not stray off that path for fear of losing you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? 
like like so so there's that okay so so in this age so of course we're in 1800s and we're talking about private interviews i mean obviously in the 1800s they had strict rules about this yeah. like girls did not go to go romp off, off with, with boys. 10 boys to, <laughs> yeah for the evening you know yeah. or or vice versa or yeah. whatever you know like we're very uh free willy here with all this yeah. stuff yeah. You know, like girls and boys, they're together, they're not together, they're over here, there's a crowd over there, she's with him alone. You know, yeah. it's it's really, I mean, in fact, if us even having this conversation seems like we're lunatics. <laughs> like, you know, if somebody said, oh, no, boys shouldn't be alone with girls, and they're, they would look You'd at you like, like, are you insane? <laughs> what, are you, what, are, what are you, you know, a dinosaur? Yeah. Yeah. Right, but there's re there's reasons they there's did that. Reasons they did that back yeah. then, and those reasons actually still exist. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, if they're too young, they're forming a friendship at too young of an age. Yeah, like a boy girl friendship. Yeah, you know, it it shouldn't be. I mean, I don't encourage it. I wouldn't encourage it from the get go. Right, you know, because the thing about when you have little kids, if you if you know. If they're always playing with the boy, this particular boy. Yeah. And then, you know, all of a sudden they're like 13, 14, 15, whatever. And you're like, okay, now we don't play with boys anymore. Yeah, how are you going to do that? How do you do that? How do you make that transition? Yeah. Like you can have a group of kid, little children go out to play. Right. Sure, fine. Yeah. But you don't. You don't allow children to go off together. One you don't by encourage one, this. One oh, they're one. best friends. friends. Yeah. And they're seven. Yeah. Right. You just don't do that. First of all... Not with members of the opposite sex. Not with members of the opposite sex at all. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, there's that. I mean, Mike Pence, he was famous for saying he would never eat dinner alone with another woman. Yeah. I mean, and, and he got ripped on for oh, that. Ripped. Like, you know, like he was some like pervert or something. something like yeah. he couldn't be alone with another woman he's yeah i mean i understood completely i understood when he gave that interview he said in an interview I mean, yeah and i was like i completely understand what he's saying yes and i would hope That's that my a, husband would say the same thing you're having a private interview yeah. with a person of the opposite sex whom you're not married with so unless you know like an what even possible reason would there be for you to have dinner with someone like that and well in politics and in business men and women well, yes, I know. I guess all the time, yes. you know, but, but he won't do it. But the thing is, like, I mean, how often that's exactly where an affair starts. Yes, that's exactly where an affair yeah. starts. Right. So, I mean, we have to look at uh, we're here. We know the fruits of all these things. Nice. We've seen it. I don't know how many. Well, in Toronto, just recently, the mayor had to resign. Yeah. And in London, we had, a. you know. Yeah. The, I mean, every time you turn around, you know, like. Yeah them and their assistant well you start to de develop a bond with somebody that you you know that shouldn't be there right right and when you have a bond with somebody the next step is always that step right 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 okay so let's go back to our book here so quote <clears throat> oh how painful for a pastor of souls to see the innocence of a young person shipwrecked at the very time when its preservation is of the utmost importance. The fruit of many years' labor and vigilance on the part of both pastor and penitent is lost in a secret conversation of an hour. But how can it be otherwise? Such is the ardor and violence of our passions that they invariably lead into temptation and even into sin. The imprudent individual who exposes himself without adopting effectual means for restraining his vicious inclinations. So, um, well, quote, quote. I, I didn't actually, we didn't talk about how strong the passions actually are. Well, they are. Right. They're very, very strong. So, I mean, the other, the other thing. So, when you get, when you're left alone, these passions, they take over. Right. I mean, especially for a girl. Like, well, I mean, because you're you have no supervision. You have, you have no, no one there. And the keeping love songs, the love songs are you know driving it on. Your you know your head is in the clouds, and you yeah. all kinds of fancy things. And and I mean, it talks about sh being shipwrecked. Your passions making you shipwrecked. Yeah. Right. I mean, what came to my head as soon as I heard that was, of course, an unwanted preg pregnancy. Right. You know, so what happens when you're, you're young and foolish and you're basing everything 
on the passions. You haven't based you haven't based a match on anything of value. Yeah. You know, like whether you're actually compatible with that person, what kind of character that person has, any of, any of these things, and you end up pregnant. Yeah. Well, now you've tied yourself to another human being. Well, and I, you know, I'm just going to put out there. Based on passions. I'm going to put out there that, you know, uh, in the 1800s, you know, when this book was written, there wasn't um, the science right. that we had nowadays. There wasn't the technology that we have nowadays. All they had was their word. Right. And there, you know, so if you wanted to guard your virtue, if you wanted to guard all of that, you would never have been alone with a man. Right. Because then that man could say something. Yes. Or anybody could say, well, she was alone with that man. Right. You know what I mean? Like they, this was, this was a matter of protection for them. Right. Right. You know, like you, you had to guard your virtue. You had to guard that Mm -hmm. so that nobody could turn around and say anything against you, you know? So, and I, and I do believe that's why, um, in, I don't know if it's the 1800s or even before, you know, uh, from what I've read about history and seen, they stuck very close to their parents. Yes. Until they were married. Right. Right. You know, they didn't go off and go, oh, I'm going to go see the world. You know, well, I'm gonna, first of you all, know. the idea was that they would get married. So there was no point. Like, I mean, we do a lot of no, stuff no, I now. Know, I know, but what I'm saying is, is that they, they didn't want it to ever be able to be said. Yes, yes. You know? So yeah. if you stuck close to your parents and your parents could vouch for you and say, no, she's never had a private interview with a boy before. She's never, you know. Yeah. People took that. Yes, yeah. As truth, you know. Right, right, right. Like your word was something of value. You know, so that to me is like, you know, something that they you had to guard. Yes. Like we have to remember this book was written in the 1800s. I know, know, but in today's world, right, like, I mean, we have a big, we have a huge gap between being single and being married. I know, and but mom, these things aren't valued anymore anyways. No, I know, but I'm just saying we have this huge gap. So, I mean, like talking about, no private interviews with the opposite sex. Yeah. It's very unlikely. You know, like, yeah. no matter who you are. I know, but I think... I mean, I, I know that I some people have managed to do it, but the majority of people are constantly going to be put in a situation where they're alone with a man. I know, but I think that if you can't avoid that, you should. You should, at all I'm cost. saying, I think we should at all go cost. back to and this. And you can't, like, I mean, I don't... I don't, I mean... I know father doesn't be alone with women. Yeah. You know, like they say, no, no. Like they don't want, they don't ever want yeah. it to be said. Or even, like even the opportunity it for it to be implied. Right. They so if that. they have to meet with somebody, then they bring somebody else, else. along. Or they yeah. don't keep the door open. Or somebody else is over there. Yeah. Right? Like they don't give the opportunity, opportunity. for the scandal. And I mean, so what I'm saying is like, you know, we do have mothers listening who have young daughters, who have Mm -hmm. young sons. You should be, and I mean, I'm going to be instilling this in my children. Right. There's no need for you to be alone with a member of the opposite sex ever. Yes. Like I am going to, in a, in a calm, reasonable way, try my best to instill that into my children. Yeah, and you have to start now. Like, you have they to start even, when you're even, young. You have to start when they're young. And like, even, if you expect to change this tie... even, I don't believe... You can call me old-fashioned. You can call me a prude. You can call me whatever you want. I don't even think that boys and girls... I mean, ta- I'm talking 17, 18, 19. I don't think they need to go on dates alone. Yeah. I don't. Right. You know, I, and I especially think the way... Because the way the world is completely chaotic and immoral and I don't think they should be. Well, the, the, I think we need to go back to this as Catholics. Well, what we need to do, we need to remove the passions because the passions um make for cloudy judgment. Yes. Right, they make for and very when, very when cloudy teenagers judgment. teenagers are alone, their passions will run wild. Run wild. And with nobody there for supervision. Yeah. They will allow them. I'm not. I'm not. Ju- I'm not saying it, but that's what happens. Yes, it's just what happens. It's just what happens. Yeah, and I mean the surefire way to avoid that is to instill in your children. Yeah, the proper way. And I mean, you. Ha- how often do you hear the words, "I'm going courting"? 
Yeah. I'm going to court somebody. We don't court people anymore. No, no. It, you know, men, young men don't come over to the father's house and say, I'd like to court your daughter. Yeah. You know, we, we've lost all that. Unfortunately, though, in order for you to find any of that, you have to stay within the realm of the village. The village. Yes. You know, because if you step fo- outside. <laughs> you say to the a I'm going man, courting. I would like you to court me. He's going to be like, huh? <laughs> you or, you know, I, dear madam, I would like to court you. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> she'd be like, what? I know, and it's just funny because I thought that, I did think that this chapter was not, but I, I am seeing how important this chapter is. Right, well, if you if you want, if you want to protect your adult, young adults, yeah. I mean, parents, there gets to a stage where you can't enforce that. Yeah. Like you can enforce that if you haven't already. When if you young. haven't, uh, when it's when they're young, you can't. You can't come to them at say eighteen, nineteen, when they've already been dating, and go, "Oh, you're not allowed to be alone with a boy anymore." They're gonna be right. like, "Okay." Mom. Or even like you know, by the time they're eighteen, like unless you've raised a very obedient child, yeah. and they say you know, that, yeah, not happening, mom. Yeah. You yeah. know, you 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 literally can't do anything about it. Yeah. So I guess you know that's the moment where you say, okay, back to the knees. Yeah. You know, because I got a lot of praying and, and sacrificing, sacrificing to, to do. Me. Yeah, you know. But generally speaking, if you wish, which and, this and is I the mean, proper I'm way. I'm saying this because I know I do know a lot of our listeners have young children. Yes, you know. And, so and this is the proper way. Yes, because if they don't. If they're going to base everything on their passions, which are running cuckoo, yeah. they make very bad, bad decisions. decisions. Yes. All right. So back to the book here. Quote, why will then, sorry, quote, why will they not learn wisdom from the sad experiences of others? Does not s- sacred and profane history testify to the crimes and calamities caused by the passion of love? End quote. Yes. Cut it off there. That must be very important. Very, very important. Why will they not learn from the mistakes of others? Right. And you Why? have here, you are not the exception to the rule. You are the rule. And I used to say, and I, and when I was, I remember when you guys were young, the one thing that I knew for fact was everybody thought they were the exception to the rule. Yeah. I say, this is the rule. Yeah, but not in my case. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly in your case. <laughs> you know, oh, but I mean, you can't convince, I mean, you get to the point where you can't convince people you're not the exception to the rule. You are the rule. Well, you do. You see it all the time. You see people saying, well, that happened. But that won't happen to me. No. this. I, guy, I'm different. I'm, I'm different. different. <laughs> this guy's a great guy. Yeah. This guy's this, you know. I mean, and the bottom line is, as you know, when you speak to old married people or um, even short married people, they know that that initial um, love mm-hmm. that happens when you first meet somebody like that says a very yeah infatuation that has a very short, short window window yeah very short window and it it moves it changes it shifts right yeah it doesn't always stay like that and then you have to move on to a deeper more uh, well i mean they have the, the greek those um three stages of love mm-hmm. you know the um i can't remember them now but you know there's the infatuation which you know one of my favorite sayings has the depth of a kiddie pool yeah you know like there's nothing to that and it's a short window yeah so when you're making a match or you're trying to do something you have to not base anything on that but mm-hmm. i mean speaking as a mother who had a bunch of teenagers once upon a time. I couldn't, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't get it, any of my children to see that. No. Because they all thought, you know. Well, we all, we all thought, you know, that, you know, well, my mom told us constantly growing up, you got to marry Catholic. You got to marry Catholic. Mm-hmm. You cannot flirt with these people in the world. You have to marry Catholic. And we just were like, Yeah. But they were, no, but this guy's different. The, you don't know him he, like I know him. Yeah. He's, because we allowed the infatuation and the passion to And let's be real. Over. These guys are nodding their head to everything you're Insane. saying. Yeah. yeah. You're going, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. All right. So, quote, another evil which frequently follows th- from secret and protracted interviews is a precipitate matrimonial engagement, which is the result of... Not of due reflection, but of excited feelings. Now, as a promise of this kind is binding, it should not be made hastily, and never when the mind is under the influence of strong emotions. 
Moreover, an engagement of this nature, generally speaking, should not be contracted a long time before its fulfillment, because in this case it is very apt to occasion temptations and serious faults, and because a change of circumstances may render the fulfillment inexpedient. End quote. So that's against long engagements. Oh, is it? Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I wrote that down there, did I? Well, you you said that, i.e., getting pregnant. Yeah, I said like, that the know, time before. Yeah. But that's against long engagements because things happen, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, um, again, the hardest part with finding a mate is all the excitable passions, right? That are going on at the same time. Right. Well, and it also said there. And you can't draw that out. And it also said to seek counsel. Right. It said that a couple of times. I mean, there's a list like you have to, uh, you have to, you have to be reserved enough to want to seek counsel. Right. And again, ladies, if you're raising young girls, this has to start way before they're teenagers yes yeah you know they have to the reserve that's necessary which is a catholic virtue is to be reserved right has to be instilled long before this right the seeking counsel has to be instilled long before this right you know so okay so and then this last little bit before we wrap up here Quote, a third abuse which young women should avoid is that of receiving the attentions of rival suitors after promising a marriage has already been giving. given. Such conduct is contrary to justice and is dishonorable. Moreover, it greatly multiplies the dangers which we have mentioned and it creates others not less formidable. It opens the door to jealousies, to quarrels, to hatred, sometimes even to murders and suicides. Yeah, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Well, basically, you know, well, if you've promised yourself an engagement to a man, you shouldn't be out flirting. Well, I don't even think I don't. I'm not even like men. you know that... dating this guy. Well, you know, you just become a little bit of a tension hound, right? You know, like you have to, you have to take the whole other sex serious. Yeah, like okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe um, entertain the idea of a marriage with you. Yeah. Well, until I unentertain that idea, I can't be looking at other people. people. Right. Right. So you have to be of a serious nature to begin with. Right. Because, you know, like uh, this boy takes my fancy and that boy takes my fancy. And now this boy over here is taking my fancy and I'm giggling with him. Oh, and I'm over here giggling with him. Like, I mean, if you're doing any of that, you're not prepared to be married. Anyways. Anyways, you know, like, so. Yeah. So to be, to be serious and. Um, parents, if well, and I mean, we've read that in the book before. Yes, that a woman should not have these. What, what was the word? The flight of fancies or something? What did they say? Yeah, that you shouldn't like, be like you know, like we're just gonna go with an airhead. I'm gonna yeah, say an airhead for lack of a better word. You know, like he, no one is gonna. You take have to be of a serious nature. nature. And again, Re- the and hardest, retain your composure. Retain your composure and all the virtues that are there. You have to be a virtuous woman, yes. really. You know, like, and when, and unfortunately, if these things are not strongly instilled by the time we're teenagers, oftentimes it is too late. It's too late. To go back. It's too late to go back. So, I mean, you have to just. I mean, because when you look at it from this way, if you haven't instilled it, if they haven't been brought up with it, if they haven't learned it, the odds of them listening when their emotions are running wild are slim to nil. Nil. We'll just go. We'll just go nil. Nil. You know, they're it's not, not they're, they're, you it's know, not going to happen. So now you're going to have to just like pray, pray, pray. And I mean, and I what, mean, we have to look at it this way too. I mean, God did give us these, God did, did design it this way that when you are of a certain age, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say he did design your hormones or whatever you want to call it to increase whatever. I'm not a scientist, so <laughs> this is not the best example, but. Because if he didn't, nobody would get married. Nobody would get married. <laughs> like, you know, nobody would get married if you didn't get those feelings. And that the, the, it is designed this way, but we have to use these feelings in the right way. And we have to regain our composure and the virtues. And the other thing too, and I know maybe a lot of a lot of you moms out there have, have children that have already made what you might consider bad matches. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the good news to that is that it you know doesn't 
I I didn't look at that personally as the end of the world. Mm -hmm. I just like, okay, well, now you're going to be the saint a hard way. That's the way I looked at it. You chose I was like, the you chose the hard way. way. Okay, congratulations, yeah. you win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you wanted pain and sorrow yeah. and suffering. I see how it is. Yeah, yeah. Some of us just want to be saints. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I shouldn't joke like that, but I'm just saying it's not you. Should what I believe what my mom is trying to say is don't get all. You don't get all like, oh, my kid made a bad match, or oh, this wasn't what I hoped for them, mm-hmm. and turn to that. This is the end of the world. It's not the because end of it's that. not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's just it's the it beginning. Just, it it's is the what beginning it is. of sanctity. And, and yeah, you have to. And you know what? I would say even you know, I, I mean, my kids are young; they're nowhere near that. But I have to say, well, your daughter's I hope, fourteen. She's pretty near. Than well, you think. yeah, nearer than I think. But what I'm saying is, it's not like she's going to turn around and get married tomorrow. No. So what I'm saying is, I hope when that time comes, and if you know, if it's God's will, she does make a terrible match or whatever, whatever happens, I will pray that I have the grace to be a strength for her. Yes. And not a um, condemner. A condemner, and not a, uh, you know bringing her down yes no you know no, you so gotta if pick you, her if up you are in that rule and if you are a parent and you do have these kids that made not the best choice be be a strength for them right right absolutely be a strength for them and help them and yeah. um and and don't don't uh turn to you know negativity you right. know yeah like, you get, get down there and go come on get up you yeah, can do this you can do this you, know? you can do this you had it you had because a weak I'm telling moment you that, but you're still at the end of the day I'm you're telling still Catholic. You, as somebody you know we all know my story i've told on the catholic family podcast as somebody who didn't make the best choice and who left the faith mm-hmm. the condemnation and the it doesn't work no it doesn't work you you have to be a strength for them and you have to be a light for them yeah that's what they need exactly you know? so anyways i guess we'll leave it there for this week and um we will be back next week with another episode and um in the meantime check out all the links that i'm going to put in the description if they work they work if they don't if they don't you know what i'm going to do i'm also going to i am always going to try to put our website link in the uh in the description because if you have something you want to say or if you have a link that you want to send us let's bypass youtube right and just send us an email yeah to our website yeah you know just send us an email and um and that's the best way to share your links and and um like i mentioned in the other episode i'm gonna try to work on putting out a newsletter with some good catholic resources or actually maybe i'll just make a static page yeah on our on our website with good catholic resources and links so yeah if you want a link that you want you either have a shop a business yeah a youtube channel a social anything you want us to add it send it mm-hmm. and we'll we'll create that we'll, page. we'll put it we'll put it on the page yeah. yeah that's a good idea and then people can just go there yeah. rather than having to go on you know we don't even have to bother with the dis- the descriptions yeah link we can just do it on the website and we can have a running list going yeah. Of all the good Catholic resources. So anyways, as always, we hope you have a... Yeah, just one more thing. Oh. Remember, I am woman. Oh, mom. <laughs> you can bend... What's the other line? I am woman. I'm going to say, I am woman. See me scraping the floor doing God's holy will and my duty. <laughs> and sacrificing. You, and sacrificing. You can bend but never break Pick me. me. I Be- will not roar. <laughs> I'm changing it the song. It only <laughs> uh, deepens the conviction in my soul. That's the other line I like. I'm so. changing that song. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we hope you all have a very blessed week. May, as always, may our Lord bless you and our lady guide you. And St. Teresa, pray, pray for, for us. us.